um, with, with all those, that sort of background of things that sort of floods into me as, as I'm sort of, well, living and reading and studying photography, I was, um, I, I won't call it a lockdown project because it wasn't a lockdown project, but I was kind of a bit bored during COVID and um, sitting around one day and I saw this print and I just loved the sunlight coming down from the trees and I kind of responded to it, I suppose, is, is the only way of saying it. I, I respond to nature and I respond to photography. And I, I wanted to bring out the, the, the sun rays um, in some way and, and, and enhance them and just make them noticed. So for some reason, I got out some thread and I don't sew. I'm rubbish. I can't even sew a button. I can't darn socks. I can't do anything. Um, and I got some thread and started to follow the lines of the sunlight. And I used, um, to start with, I used ordinary cotton and then I felt it needed a bit more. So I added in some silver thread, which you can't really see here, but I might be able to show it to you in a minute under the, under the other camera. And I really enjoyed this process of puncturing. So it's a real punctum, a real Bart's punctum, punctum, um, the image with the needle. And so slightly perhaps damaging it, I don't know, interacting with it certainly. Um, and then the calmness of threading, of, of working out where the thread was going to go each time and doing it. Again, it was very rhythmic. It's back to that rhythmic thing you're doing in the darkroom, of rocking the trays, and it's rhythmic doing the sewing. But it's creative and it's tactile. I'm holding the print, I'm playing with the print. It's, it's really enjoyable. Um, so yes, so now I'm going to show you some examples of, of what I do. So bear with me while I just um, switch the camera. Thank you very much. See if I can do this. So I'm going to stop sharing the PowerPoint. And what I've now got to do is find the camera, which is, yeah, it's here. Perfect. So I hope this isn't too confusing. I've managed to turn it so it's the right way round. I'm going to show you a little bit of how I do the layering, how I work out my lining up. It's, it's not rocket science, but if I talk through how it how it kind of works, it will it will just show how my mind thinks. So here's, here's an image um, that I did. Um, and actually in this one, this was early days of my, of my MA and I was actually literally putting myself into the print. So um, I'm sitting at the bottom of this tree and it's a self portrait. But later on, as you saw in the earlier images, I, I took myself out and put myself in in a photograph. So what I might do is I, I'll, I'll take, um, take an image so here is an image of me leaning back against a tree. So this was a current day image um, of myself. And in the previous project, in, in that project, I did myself as a child and myself as an adolescent and parts of my body. But here we are. And then I, I would print it. And then I just play around with it to see what, what I like about it. And so you might sort of think, Oh, well, you know, this, this bit lines up here with this, and it's all about lining up for me. It's a bit weird. It's about, well, it may not be weird. It's about fitting into the picture or, or just fitting in with the landscape. This bit lines up, this, this is quite nice. And, and, and this bit here just joins up to the, to the, to the, to the uh, well, it's big branch. Um, so we've got, we've got this and actually that's quite nice, but, but part of me is thinking, well, no, I don't know. It doesn't sit quite right. I'll, let's have another little play. And I've, I can see this black bit here and this black bit here. And it's like, oh, what, what happens if I kind of line those up a bit? So I bring it down a bit like that. And suddenly it's, to me anyway, I'm thinking, oh, wow, that's a bit better. I like this. I'm liking this black bit here, sliding down here. I like that this joins up here. If I just tilt it a little bit, this bit will join up there. So, it, so it's kind of, it's a lot of, it's a, it takes time actually. I mean, it's not as simple as just getting the print and slamming it on it. It takes time, you play around with it. I might say, well, should I take it down there a bit? That bit lines up there. And, and I do it until it pleases me. I haven't actually done this before this, with this one. So, so this, is, this is literally me talking you through how I do it. And I'm looking at how does it fit? How does it line up? How, do, how does it work? And when I'm happy with it, then I'll, do, then I'll dry mount it into place or, or, or check it. Or I may even have to reprint the, the little picture a little bit at a different size um, just to get it to, to fit as best I can. It won't fit perfectly. It, obviously it won't. Um, but it's, it, it, I do it until it pleases me. 
when it does please me, it, it's brilliant. It's just the most really lovely feeling when it when I think, yes, that works. And I do like a little Snoopy dance, which is a really nice thing to do. So, so that's that. But I mean, let's look at another thing, for example, this, this, okay, so, uh, a picture of myself, self uh, portrait, which uh, is not something I really enjoy doing. Um, but this one, uh, it sort of seems you would think, ah, oh, okay. So we've got this arch here of the um, of the branch coming here, coming down to here. That might be a sort of obvious place or pleasing place again to put it for me. For somebody else, might be different. But I'm just showing you how my mind works, and I'll just do one more here. Um, this is an example of of different size prints. So I've got this same print printed in different sizes. Obviously, I was trying to see which one fit it, fitted the best. And initially, um, on another print, I had it this way around uh, because it was me doing a handstand against a tree. And it seems sort of that it fits or could fit quite nicely there. Um, but what I ended up doing when I was playing with it earlier today is I thought, well, I'll, I'll try it around the other way and I'll see how it fits. And I couldn't quite get these bits to fit it comfortably for want of a better word, for me. So I found the middle sized one was the best one. And I worked this in and worked it in. And then I thought, yep, yeah, that works. That, that's, I'm kind of happy with that. This little bit, this branch fits this little bit of snow here. And this bit going along here comes up here and fits there. The legs fit in there. Ooh, if I just tweak it a little bit, that bit, that tiny little bit fits there. And so you can see it's a lot of playing and manipulation. And that's how I do my layered images. And, 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 and again, it's just such a nice thing to do. It's using your hands, it's playing around. Think back to the dark room where you were rocking the trays and playing around. And it's, it's a physical process and I'm really, really enjoying it. And I'm not sitting down when I'm doing it like this. I'm walking around and I'm thinking and I'm looking and it's, and it's, it's really enjoyable. Um, so just to show you some other things that I've done and, and um, Goodness me, I've only got five minutes left. Um, this is the one that uh, Rebecca showed on the on the um, example of the course. And, and this was um, taking a landscape. And what I did was I started by playing with the same landscape by putting paint on it and flicking the paint on it because I wanted that sort of spatial effect that you get. And I think it's with Doctor Who where it's sort of going in and the, and the stars are sort of coming out. And I, I, I really liked that effect. And so um, that's where that one started. And then I thought, I don't know why I thought it, but I wanted to, to incorporate something that was a little bit more to do with landscape and woodland. And I was reading a book about trees or a magazine about trees from the Woodland Trust. And I decided that I'd hole punch some pages because I wanted color uh, from this magazine. And then what I did was I carefully stuck the dots on, again, hoping to get that sort of slightly Doctor Who science fiction effect. But what a lot of people don't know is that I'm, I'm still playing games and my game they often you can't tell the games that I'm playing and in this if you look really 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 closely you can see some of the green dots line up with the branches so there's one here there's a little branch on that green dot that I've lined up with the branch there and this one here and this one here sorry my camera's not that great and I've got a lot of little things like that. And you have to know me and you have to look really, really closely to find those little things. And it's just those little games that I like to play that I don't always point out to people. Um, so stitching, yes. Um, and I know quite a lot of people are, are interested in the stitching. Um, this, this was the one I was talking about that I started with. And if I tilt it a little, you can see the sparkle coming out of some of the sparkly threads. Uh, there so that was that one and then I did a similar one again it's a mix of white and silver thread um, and it's a weeping willow and it's got these gorgeous gorgeous branches that just drop down and I just wanted to give that feeling of, of it just falling onto you and it's not difficult to do and as they say on Blue Peter so here's one I prepared earlier uh, so it probably isn't the best example um, it's a practice one. So um, just move that one. This is an experiment because I'm going to try using different color thread. This is a um, black and white works really well. 
because with the contrast often um, and again when you're lining up uh, black and white can work well but with with landscapes because you you don't have a clash of, of colors and textures and things but this one I've, I've started to you can just about see a few threads going down there these trees are in Thailand and, and they just have these great long strings of, of great of creepers coming down. So what, what you do is you, you puncture the photograph first. You make the point where you want to put your thread and then you find that hole on the back and it's really hard because it's dark here and put the needle in and bring it from the back first. Well, I do. You pull it through you can already see some on the back here. And you secure it with something as complicated as sellotape. Makes a nice pattern on the back. And once you've done that, you go back again to the other side. And you decide where you're going to put that thread next. And I'm, I'm following at the moment, I'm following the lines of the creepers coming down. And what I want to do is end up with, because it's quite dark, this bit here, I want to end up with these silver threads sort of highlighting that dark bit. So um, it, it's often about balance and what works um, with it, it, in the right sort of balance with what else you've, you've sewed, I suppose. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've just put it in there and I'm pulling it tight and you can just about see that there. Um, and then what I do is I then the next hole again you do it from the front and it's a lot of thinking so I'm just doing this this very quickly here but I'm going to make a hole here. And I'm going back and it's quite at first, it was a really difficult thing for me to do to actually damage my photograph by, by puncturing a hole in it. So the first time I did it, it was in a sense, it was, well, it was liberating, I suppose. And that's what I find. It's a really liberating thing to do. And you can come out and I'm just going to look for that little bit of white there and puncture it in there and do that. Um, it's just once you've done it, you're just breaking out, basically. So that's the line there. Um, I realize that this is quite difficult to see. And I also realize that I'm running out of time, but I'm just going to say that what I thought I might do on this one is a bit of a Julie Coburn. And I think I'm going to use some red sparkly thread. Doesn't have to be sparkly. Um, if you're thinking of doing work for other people, they do tend to respond to sparkle, but um, I do the work for me, so. It really doesn't matter, but I think you can just about see there's that bit of red there, which leads me to sort of think, actually, it could be fantastic with lots and lots of strings of red coming down or even rainbow effects. Um, so that gives you a very, very brief overview of how I do the stitching. Um, other things I do, I crumple my pictures. Um, I have folded them. I've got one folded somewhere. Oh, there we are. This was one I folded, again, it's quite hard to see, but I did it, it's like a corrugated effect. Uh, I just looked at it and I thought that needs folding. I can't always tell you why I do it, but it's, it's, just, it's just a response to what the image looks like and what I think will work with the image. image. I've used gold flake on them. Um, this is something, it looks a complete mess, but it's actually in process at the moment. And this is where I've screwed up mountains and skin and trees, and then started to link them all together to make one, one work. And then finally, um, again, this is something else you can do. You, you just get your images and, and respond to them really. Um, this was um, a, here we are, that's the, that's the complete image of trees and water. I sliced it up and now what I'm doing is I'm playing with it upside down and lining the um, limbs up as much as possible to create a new, a new image, which actually I may even look at it this way. So it's just playing. It's basically, it's about play. So I hope that's given you a bit of an idea into my mind and how it works and what I do and why. And um, all I can say is play and just enjoy yourselves. Okay.
Well, thank you so much, Rachel. Um, that was really inspiring. Um, and definitely, I think we all need a little push to be more playful and less precious about our imagery. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. And there's been a great response in the chat to you. Oh. Um, and we've got a few questions. If people don't mind hanging on for a few minutes to listen to questions, if you've got to shoot off to go get your dinner or something like that, feel free to. Um, and thank you for coming along, but for anyone staying for the questions. Uh, Rachel, um, you're asked quite a few actually, hold on. So we've got one from Sarah. On the awareness image of the sunlight through the trees, were the stitches single stitches? Yes, they are. Yes, yes. So, um, yeah, so I, I punctured it like I, I showed, pulled it through and then yes, pull it through again. And I just make sure that it's really tense, um, that there's a good tension before I start the next stitch. Mm -hmm. Okay, brilliant. Um, might be a wee bit quick fire with these ones then. <laughs> so the next one um, comes from Jill and says, do you ever cut your photos to make a collage type effect? I think you I can haven't yet, actually. Uh, well, apart from the one I just showed at the end, mm. uh, but at the moment, uh, uh, no, no. Um, I think I'm going to get there, but I haven't got there yet. I think at the moment what I do is I cut them and then I'm, I'm still doing this lining up, fitting together thing, which is still a bit of precision. So I've still got to escape a bit more and get away from that precision. So, so the short answer is no, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> but to come. Uh, brilliant, thank you. Um, another one there from David says, do you think that there is a market for your altered images? Do I think there is a market? Oh, I think that's um, that's a, that's a, a really hard one to ask. Um, uh, possibly, I think I, I've had a good response to the ones I've showed in my studio. People are very interested in them. Uh, they're quite intrigued, and I'm quite surprised about how many questions I get about how do I do it. Because to me, it's instinctive and it, and it just doesn't seem that complicated. So, yeah, um, absolutely. We'll dive in there. Is that okay to just interrupt? Uh, just quickly on that question, because it's something I do a lot of work about. And Rachel, what a great talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. On the question of is there a market? Um, many of the people you mentioned, John Stezica, Mary Ma, um, Jessa Fairbrother, are absolutely selling their work, um, you know, well, for yes. some prices yeah. because they are, I think the thing is because they're unique, individual tactile pieces, and that really does give them a value that's over and above the addition, which is everyone is different. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Even if I was to repeat the stitching on, on, on the same photo, it would still be different. Yes. Uh, because you respond to it differently each time as well, according to your mood or I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. So yeah, there is the market. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, another question from David and he says, does black and white work better than color in most altered images? I think for the stitching at the moment, the black and white does. Um, although if you see Julie Coburn's used um, color um, and certainly for the ones, well, when I was lining them up, I lined them up with both black and white and color. Um, so I think it's down to you and what, what you feel and what, what's coming out of you as you're, as you're playing really. Absolutely. Um, Adele asks, do you use a specific type of paper when working with thread? No, but I'm definitely finding that hemp or bamboo is more um, is, is, is better to sew than using like an inkjet, um, an average inkjet sort of Epsom Giclée paper. So yeah, the sort of hemp, cotton rag, bamboo stuff's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. The last question that we have is, what is your favourite image from Sarah? <laughs> That's really hard. Um, I... I, th I think it's probably the one with the dots because, um, because I like the fact that I've got these really, really tiny little bits lining up in it that people don't notice. And unless they show a particular interest in the work, then I'm not going to tell them because I'm like that. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just to, to read out a few things, Nick said, wonderful chat. Very inspiring. Thank you. Um, again, Ian has said that, um, that loves the concept of the traditional and physical back. Um, yeah, lots of lots of love in the chat for you. Thank um, you. And anybody asking about the recording, yes, it's okay to share it on. It will be on YouTube, um, and I'll get that to you uh, in the next few days when we upload it on YouTube. You'll get a mail in about it. 
Um, and then just on talking about favorite images at the minute, we are actually doing a stay and chat um, and that will be next week. And you come along and it will be a discussion um, about 2021 and we'll all show our favorite images and have a nice chat. So please do come along to that as well, if you've got the time. Great. Lovely. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you massively to Rachel. That was such a beautiful uh, demonstration as well as talk and your research was really beautiful as well. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for so many people for coming. It was quite scary, but <laughs> so thank you. Thanks. Thanks ever so much, Rachel and, and Rebecca.